Hi, welcome to Snapshot Wisconsin's Facebook Live event. As you can tell, it's raining outside. <laughs> Which goes to show just how much we care about this project and we're really excited to be here. This is the Snapshot Wisconsin team and we are here on Dean's property. Uh, we just want to say a few things before we get started. One, uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to write them in the box below and we're going to share a link at the end of this whole event with information about how to sign up for a camera for the project. Okay, well, okay, cool. okay. Yeah. So I'm Taylor and this is Allie. We're research technicians on the project. Uh, so we just want to start off with an icebreaker. And uh, so what do you guys think a bear is called that doesn't have any teeth? Stay tuned to the end of the Facebook Live event and we'll give you the answer. Okay, so what is Snapshot Wisconsin? Snapshot Wisconsin is a wildlife monitoring project through the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. We utilize a statewide network of trail cameras uh, that volunteers like you operate. Our two main goals of the project are one, to engage the public in natural resources through hands-on learning, and two, to provide wildlife management data for making decisions. We provide our volunteers with all the equipment and training necessary, necessary to participate, including a Bushnell trail camera, SD cards, camera mounting equipment, etc. And if you stay tuned, we'll give you a sneak peek into just what you can find in a volunteer trail camera kit. Snapshot Wisconsin is a great way for individuals, families, classrooms, and tribal members to discover their local wildlife. And we just wanted to point out, we forgot to mention, this is our mascot, Snappy, and we just had to bring him along with us. Uh, we're going to introduce our program coordinator, Susan, who's going to go over how to um, the, the launch event that we're talking about today and some statistics on the project. Thanks, Taylor. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk about why today is special. Um, we're really excited to be launching statewide for trail camera hosts today. Um, and I've been involved in the project since we first got volunteers back in the spring of 2016. Uh, back then, we just had two counties, Iowa and Sawyer County, and um, we since then we've spread across the state up to 26 counties, and now we're statewide. So anybody with access to at least 10 acres of land, and that's private or public properties, um, can sign up to host one of our trail cameras. Um, and you know we've learned a lot over the last two years from the cameras. Um, we've used the data that we've been collecting. Um, to do fond to doe ratios, which are an important metric for figuring out deer populations, deer quotas, those sorts of things. Um, we've also learned uh, more about the spread of fishers and how they're expanding their habitat southward in Wisconsin, which was really exciting. Um, we also have used the cameras to study phenology because we get um, a, a time lapse photo every day from the cameras and we have a long term record of our camera sites in that way. Uh, it's starting to rain a little more, but we're going to keep going. We are very dedicated. Um, so, um, a few statistics about the project. We've got over a thousand volunteers who don't check their camera when it's raining because they don't have to. And they have over 1,200 cameras and over 22 million photos have come in so far. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you can get involved and Sarah is going to come and talk about that along with our trail camera host volunteer here, Dean. So we'll bring them in next. Hello, my Hello. name is Sarah. I'm a research technician on the Snapshot Wisconsin project. And here is Dean, who is one Hi, of our everyone. trail camera hosts here in Dane County. Um, so first, we're going to tell you about how to get involved with the project. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. So as we mentioned, one way is to host a trail camera. As Susan mentioned, this can be on public or privately owned land of at least 10 acres in size. Um, even if the land belongs to a friend or a family member, you can still host it there as long as you have their written permission. A couple other requirements are we ask that you check the camera at least once every three months or once every four months um, and that you stay with the project for at least a year. Um, so another way you can get involved, um, this is a nice one for the rainy days, is you can classify photos online on our Zooniverse website. Now this is a crowdsourcing website where we post images from all of our cameras. So you can log on online, it's www.snapshotwisconsin.org. You can see pictures of bobcats, of elk, all across the state in rain or shine or snow. They don't care about the weather and neither do we today. Um, so 
that's a great way to get involved and we have volunteers across the state, across the country, and even around the globe who are helping us classify photos of Wisconsin wildlife. Um, we do also encourage educators and tribal affiliates to get involved with the project. We've been accepting those applications statewide the entire time, but now we're launching statewide to the general public as well. Uh, that being said, we are going to give um, preference to educators and tribal applications, so encourage involvement there. Um, also for educators, it's a great way to get involved with your students, um, have them collecting meaningful data that is used by the Wisconsin DNR. We also recently have um, a bunch of lesson plans available for those as well. Um, so now we're going to pass it over to our guest. We're the guests. We're here at your property. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dean. So right. Dean has been with the project for a little over a year now, so happy staff anniversary. Thank you. Um, and so we're going to put you on the hot seat and ask you a couple okay. of questions here. Great. Um, so if you want to tell us a little bit about why you got involved in the project, and you can tell us even a little bit about your property here. And we have your trail cameras just a couple feet to our right. left over here, too. Uh, so uh, I threatened to get a trail cam a long time ago, talking to my family about it, because we love seeing the wildlife on the property. And uh, I always wondered how much it was really there. Um, so when we were talking about it one evening, my daughter mentioned that uh, one of her clients uh, found out something about uh, getting a trail cam through the DNR. So I instantly went online. It was super easy. I signed up. They contacted me back, uh, went to the training class, and uh, here we are today. And I get to view all those great photos. That's awesome. Um, another question. Do you want to tell us about maybe some of your favorite wildlife that you spotted on your camera so far? Is there anything you really weren't expecting? A lot of raccoons. Yes. <laughs> raccoons have been really fun to watch, um, but uh, pretty typical stuff, deer, turkey. Uh, it's been really fun to watch a family of fox that have passed back and forth through the camera uh, for almost every day for about a year now. <laughs> they don't mind the rain, I'm sure, so uh, here we go. And then, um, is there anything you want to tell to people who are potentially interested in becoming volunteers with the project? Well, it's super easy uh, to get started, to check the camera, to upload the photos, and to review the photos. And it's uh, really gratifying uh, because I know that all of the captures are being used for good research, and it's just a good project to be part of. Thank you so much. We're so happy you're My pleasure. We're happy Glad to, to be here it. with you today. I'm going to get dry now if that's all right. Yeah, that is all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we're going to tell you a little bit about <laughs> the equipment you'll receive as a snapshot with so when you receive your equipment after you've been accepted in the program, it will not be so soaping wet like this. Okay, so let's take a look at what you get from us. You're going to get this, this nice slick bag. It won't be so slick. It's like Christmas. It's, it's very wet Christmas. So we provide all of our volunteers with a Bushnell trail camera. Um, we'll give you a quick peek of it here. They are waterproof. so. We are all good there. <laughs> so while, she, while she's getting the camera on, I'll kind of show you what other things we get. You get uh, rechargeable batteries that you'll go and replace every time you go out to the camera. You're also going to get a mounting device. Mounting device that goes into the tree. You're also going to be provided a charger to charge all of your rechargeable batteries. <laughs> and so here's an example. This is our latest version of the Bushnell camera. Uh, they take photos every time they are activated by either uh, motion or by heat. And so they're taking pictures all day, all night, not triggered by the rain. Um, and so they take black and white photos at night with an infrared flash. So you're seeing the wildlife that's happening all day and all year round. So do we want to go hop over to Dean's camera and maybe take a little peek there? Okay, so we've got Dean's camera here. You can see it's attached to the tree with this stick and pick. Um, whenever you walk by the camera, or if there's any heat, that's what triggers the camera to take a photo. Let's take a peek inside. But not for too long, just, you know, the rain. So, this is your setup. Have an 
privacy is one of our main concerns at Snapchat Wisconsin. We take multiple measures to make sure that your privacy is protected there. Okay, so we're going to move on to uh, how the, the data that you collect as a volunteer is used in science. And I'm going to let Susan jump in here to help talk about that. Yeah, so um, all these photos, after they're classified, they become the data that we use for our project. Um, so a few things that we've seen recently, this rain is letting up just a little, which is great. Um, we had our first moose sighting um, on a snapshot Wisconsin camera. We actually had two really close together um, in time. One was in Oneida County and one in Vilas County. That was very exciting. The first, what we're calling a rare species, um, recorded on a snapshot camera. Um, we've also had the cameras set up to monitor the elk populations. Um, up, up north in Jackson County and um, Cram Lake and the Flambeau River State Forest. And those cameras are giving us information about the elk populations um, and cow to calf ratios and all those sorts of things that we need to know for those reintroduced populations. And as I mentioned earlier, we're also using the cameras to collect the, or figure out the fawn to doe ratios in all of the counties that we've had cameras in so far. Um, Taylor, do you want to talk about the wolf count yeah. and some other stuff? Yeah. So, um, data from Snapshot is used to supplement other ways to monitor wildlife. Uh, one way that we monitor wolves in Wisconsin is by doing a winter wolf tracking count. Um, so basically volunteers go out and they count traps and we can use Wisconsin uh, photos, observe, observations that we know are wolves, and we can direct volunteers where to go to you know, find potential wolves. Uh, another way that we're using Snapshot Wisconsin data is um, through NASA, actually. Surprising, this is one of our partners. We work with NASA. Every day, a satellite goes over Wisconsin and uh, takes a photo, and the cameras also take a time lapse at this time, at 10.40 every day. And we compare that satellite imagery and Actually, the Taylor, data. Actually, our partners at UW-Madison do that for us. Oh. We don't do that part. Oh, so. that's true. <laughs> yeah. That is true. That's We've got enough us. to do. <laughs> Yeah, so we're using that to look at phenology, things like spring green up and comparing that to animal, you know, activity when things are coming out of hibernation, stuff like that. Uh, the last thing I want to mention about how we're using Snapshot Wisconsin data to, uh, to update science is uh, we just ran a prairie chicken pilot study this past spring. Uh, so typically the Wisconsin DNR uses staff to monitor lecking grounds, which is where the prairie chickens go and they have these big air sacs that they boom, the males to attract the ladies. <laughs> and uh, so basically we wanted to set up cameras and kind of compare how many photos we're getting of the chickens versus what the staff are seeing. So the results are still coming out about that, but we're looking forward to, you know, doing projects like this in the future. Um, if you want to stay up to date on other science updates, check out our blog and our newsletter, which we'll provide information for at the end of this Facebook Live event. Yeah. Hopefully when it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, do we have any questions? Teacher resources. Mm -hmm. um, so, Sarah is a good one to talk about teacher resources. She's got the down low and all of the yep. educator stuff. Yeah. So, I'll hop in here. Um, so, we have a lot of educators who are part of the project. As I mentioned, we've been accepting those applications statewide. Um, we had a grant early on with the uh, Wisconsin Society for Science Teachers. Um, so, we're able to make some really neat resources. For example, we have a field guide that we're able to supply to classrooms. Mm -hmm. They really enjoy that. Um, we also are starting up a talk board where it can be a more interactive experience. Teachers can help share lesson plans and help share what they're doing with their Snapshot Wisconsin camera in their classroom. Um, actually, just today, we released a series of lesson plans. So we have them for ages all the way from kindergarten up until seniors in high school. Um, these are featuring some of the really fun Wisconsin photos we're capturing on our cameras. Um, also using some of the data, and so that's really neat for students to actually interact with that data that they're actually helping to collect on their Snapshot Wisconsin cameras. So those are all available on our website, um, newly redesigned. We have a whole page called Snapshot in the Classroom, and that links to some of those resources. We also are going to have a new educator newsletter that's going to be coming out as well twice a year. So, <laughs> What's the length of the program? How long will Snapshot Wisconsin <laughs> How long is the program running? How, so people like to ask us uh, how long Snapshot Wisconsin will last, especially at like volunteers ask this at trail camera training. And I always tell them that Snapshot is going to last forever. 
and that people sign up forever, but that's clearly a joke. So um, we want people to sign up um, who want to host a camera and participate for at least a year, hopefully longer than that. Um, but there is no end date for the project itself. So um, we're definitely um, going into the future and we'll need volunteers um, throughout that whole time. So sign up, um, participate for at least a year, and um, that would be great. Um, I know um, we're going to be sharing all of the links that you need to find out more information about Snapshot um, in the comments when we're done with this event. Um, you can go to the DNR webpage and type in Snapshot Wisconsin in the keyword box to go directly to our newly redesigned website um, and find out everything you need to know there. There's frequently asked questions, all that kind of stuff is available there. Um, can we run more than one camera in two different counties? You definitely can. Um, the question was running more than one camera. Um, what we're looking for is one camera per survey block. So if you have access to land in more than one survey block, you can certainly sign up um, for more than one camera. We do like to try to limit new volunteers to just two cameras to start off with until you get comfortable. Um, but we have people that have been participating like in the elk monitoring project, for example, running like five or six cameras. So um, to start off with, two cameras is good, but then we can see where we go from there. Can you talk more about what a survey block is? Sure, that's a great question. Um, so a survey block, um, that's we've divided the whole state up into these survey blocks and each one is a quarter of a township. Um, and so in each one we want, um, and a quarter of a township is nine square miles, so three miles by three miles. And we want one camera per survey block, but with 6,000 of these survey blocks across the state, there's plenty of opportunity for people to get involved in the project. We have other questions? Okay, I think we are getting ready to wrap up here. You can always send questions to our um, team inbox. That's DNR snapshot Wisconsin at wisconsin.gov. Okay guys, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I know we were really excited to be here despite the rain. Uh, and I know you guys were all just like sitting on the edge of your seats waiting to hear about that joke that we mentioned in the beginning of the <laughs> Facebook Live event. So what do you call a bear that doesn't have any teeth? A, a gummy, gummy bear! bear.